Alrighty. Hello, everybody. This is Sarah back again. It is January, oh gosh, 8th, I want to say. Let me look at my cupcake drawing so I can see the date. Yes, it's the 8th, uh, which means we are officially in our second week of the year. How amazing is that? You've survived week one. And now your kids are going back to school. And it's time to get you back, right? Now you have more time to think because you're not having to entertain your kids. You're not having to make sure that everybody has enough snacks at home. And that Bobby remembers that he has to uh, drive, practice driving over Christmas break so that he can get his permit or whatever. You know, you just, you don't have to think about it anymore because it's done. And I'm really proud of you. And no matter how you did it, whether you did it with a whole bunch of cheating on your diet or whether you did it with staying strict, you did it and you survived. And I think that's badass. So good for you. Um, alrighty. I, I have decided to enter like the rest of the month. I'm not going to weigh in. I, I can't keep weighing in. Like I weigh in like every day. Sometimes three or four times a day. So I'm not I'm not getting back on the scale at all. So I have no weight updates for you. Um, my back is hurting a little bit. But I have taken two rest days in a row. Because quad day was so awful. Uh, and I think it's just because I am not moving enough. And so I'm going to roll it out and see if that fixes it. Um, our workout intensities have gone up. 9,000%. It is insane. Like, ow. <laughs> we push each other. It's kind of nice. Steph pushes me and I push her back. And it's like, well, if she can do it, I can do it. Even if it's at a lower weight, I can at least match reps, right? Most of the time I can't. She's she's a machine. Uh, Oh, gosh. Also, I want to remind you guys that it is only week two, right? Results are not instant. This is not something that is going to just magically happen in one week. You probably lost a bunch of water weight, which is awesome. But you're about three weeks away from your first plateau. Uh, average. Some people already hit it and some people hit it at week four. So, you know, enjoy this momentum while, it, while it's happening and, and cling to it. And remember that plateaus can be busted through. They are made to be busted through. So you've got this. You do not need to give up your New Year's resolutions. I believe that you can absolutely achieve everything that you set out to achieve. Isn't this cute? It says, but first, unicorns. My daughter, <laughs> my daughter knows that I'm obsessed with mythical creatures. I have them all over my body in my house. And so she got me a set of unicorn notebooks that I have been using a lot recently. And so I'm using it for my notes here. Um, instant results are a lie. Anybody that says, you know, lose 35 pounds, who wants to lose 35 pounds in a week? I'm worried because I've lost 95 pounds in five months that I'm gonna have too much loose skin and it won't go back to where it's supposed to go. That's terrifying because I don't wanna have to have surgery. I'm scared of surgery. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like it. Ugh. So instant results are a lie. You don't need instant results anyway. Um, and stay off that scale. I'm not joking. When I first started keto, I stayed off the scale for the first six weeks. I had gone to the doctor. I checked in at the doctor and I used the weight on my scale that morning, which was 360 pounds. And, you know, doctor verified. I When I got to the doctor's, I was 355 pounds. But my scale that morning said 360. So that's what I went with. Um... Ow. My face hurts. I've got super bad allergies, and so my sinuses are kicking my butt. I decided I shouldn't drink so much Dr. Pepper on camera, so I'm drinking water now, so I can, at least while I'm talking to everybody about my keto life, be a little bit healthier. But do not get me wrong, guys. I am a Diet Dr. Pepper fiend. I love Diet Dr. Pepper. I will not give it up. Um, I just think a little bit of water is a good thing. And I figure while I'm filming these videos, why not? 
And you guys might also wonder why I'm always in pajamas when you see me. And it is because I am a hot mess. Thank you, loud, crackly bottle. It's because I'm a hot mess. And honestly, there are some things in life that I want to change. And um, that's not one of them. I like my hot mess style. I am wearing flannel pajamas. Pajama bottoms. Men's, I think, Nautica's, Nautica brand or whatever from Costco. And a tank top that was like $3 at a thrift shop. That's my life. That's how I enjoy uh, dressing most of the time. And I am a housewife. So really, um, I put on a little bit of makeup right before Lee gets home just because he's my sweetie. And I love him. But, um, yeah, most of the day I'm barefaced and not, uh, not wearing normal people clothes. I just find that if I put on normal people clothes, they just get dirty real fast, uh, because I'm cleaning. And so, you know, I'm used to how my tank top and pants swish and I don't get them dusted, dusty or whatever, but also I wash these like every day. So anyway. Speaking of, you might hear my washing machine in the background right now. Oh, uh, this is such a weird thing. Okay. Okay, so I don't know how many of you guys um, are doing keto for the first time. I'm a huge bread person. I've always been a huge bread person. Like, put it in my mouth. I love bread. Especially. Especially love it when we went to restaurants and they serve free bread. Oh my god, just stuff myself, gorge myself on free bread. Um, and it was so good. But I always had like this weird yeasty smell. Like, you know, when you, ladies, ladies, when you sniff your boobs and you're like, why do I smell like a loaf of French bread? Oh, shame spiral. Um, the reason that you smell like a loaf of French bread is because you ate a loaf of French bread, my dear. Uh, so I smell different now. I smell sort of like berries, I guess. I don't, I don't really know. Um, I didn't notice it. Lee did. So he said it smelled really good. Uh, so chemical changes are to be expected because you're changing what you're eating. So of course the things that you, uh, smell like are going to start changing. I mean, that's just normal. Uh, they sh that should actually be celebrated because it's like, yeah, you're getting healthier, and it's that's that's some real change. Um, what are my top ten YouTube channels? This is something I get asked a lot: is what are my top ten YouTube channels? The um, like just in general from people who are always looking for new information, new things to watch. Um, is, hey, do you have a favorite YouTube channel? And so I have put together, I say top 10, but there's probably more. I think there's 11 on here. I put together my list of my favorite channels. Now, I don't watch a whole lot of TV. I'm usually up and about picking things up and cleaning. And I know you see my lights on my uh, staircase because I did that at 3 o'clock in the morning last night. And I was like, oh, I like how those lights look on my stairs. Anyway, <laughs> but so I keep these things on like in the background. Uh, often they inspire me and um, make me look things up. They make me question. They catch my interest. They it, make my muse go, hey, you should draw something. And then I do. And I'm like, yes, I feel so fulfilled. So these are the channels that I would say that if you need something on to sort of help you feel like somebody's there or whatever because you're a stay-at-home wife like I am. Um, one is Keto Connect. I really like Keto Connect. And yeah, I'll go ahead and link all their channels in the doobly-doo. Um, it's going to be a really filled up doobly-doo as many as I can until the doobly-doo is no longer able to be full. Uh, so Keto Connect is probably my number one I just, I love their approach to keto. I love that they're so irreverent. I love that 
they love their cat more than they love their dog because I also love my cat more than I love my dog. Team cats win. <laughs> it's not that I don't love my dog. I adore my dog. He's my baby, my son. But Tiger Lily is the cat that I got. My ex-husband was like, I don't want a cat. So when I got out of that relationship, I was like, I'm getting a fucking cat. And I did. And she's amazing. And she's super bitchy. And I don't know where she's at right now. Probably upstairs in a window somewhere. But she goes, meow, meow, meow all the time. And she's so funny. And I will insert a clip of the cat meowing here. <laughs> she's adorable. I don't know what to tell you guys. My cat is adorable. I love her. Here's some glamour shots of my cat. Um, my dog is also adorable. I just, I don't know. I'm more of a cat person than a dog person, but I still rescue all the animals. I love them all. <coughs> so anyway, that long-winded explanation of why I like Keto Connect. Uh, then we have Drawing with Waffles. And Drawing with Waffles is something I actually just recently found and Oh my gosh, you guys, she's so talented and she doesn't have a super annoying voice to me. So I feel like I can listen to her for an extended period of time and it just helps stimulate my, um, creativity. Like I am currently, um, using, I believe it's hers, maybe I think, uh, video on, you know, her steps to be a better artist and it's like draw something now what needs to be improved draw that now look at a real life thing and try drawing it again and so that's what I've turned this little unicorn notebook into is a little I really want to get good at drawing cupcakes so that's what I'm drawing that's what I'm working on right now and if you guys are wondering why I keep squinting it's because I'm trying to look at the camera which is down here I don't know why I did that. I will work on that next time. Anyway, uh, after that, Drawing with Waffles, I really highly recommend her, especially if you like cute things. Like, she's just out of the box. She super talented. Highly recommend. Um, another <laughs> high-energy artistic person. I mean, just so freaking artistic. I just want to, like, eat them. I, I know that sounds weird, but it's just like the talent that they have excites me. It's like humans, humans can do this stuff. Humans figured this out. We're not a doomed species. I'm so excited. So that's why I really like certain uh, YouTube videos. So one of them is Nick Zametti and he's a resin and wood turning guy. Resin pouring, wood turning. Uh, sometimes he turns resin as well uh, on a lathe. Uh, he's a woodworker and he is freaking phenomenal. Oh my gosh. I watch his videos and I'm just like pfft, mind blown. First of all, first of all, not only can he do those things, he can also film himself doing those things. I don't... Guys, I can't draw if anybody other than my husband is in the room. My best friend comes over and I can't draw. I, like... It's like when you can't pee if somebody else is in the bathroom. That's how it is with me. If somebody else is there, I can't. I can't do it. So, to be able to watch people and their process. It really helps me come out of my shell. It helps me to, um, think outside of the normal box that I am stuck into. Like, no, why did, why can't it be a different planet? Why can't I draw an alien if I want to? And I do. And I have a good time because people like Nick Zametti think outside the box and just, it's crazy. So, um, they're so inspiring. I love it. If you're looking for, um, these are so out of order. Like I was trying, I didn't even try to group them all together. Sorry. Uh, the next one I like a lot is actually, actually Juji Mufu. And if you have not seen Juji Mufu's videos, I really recommend that you go check them out because they're first of all, fucking hysterical. And second of all, it will open you up to the world of grip strength. I, can pick up 
a 25 pound dumbbell by myself. Can you? Like, by, by the, I don't know what the end thingy is called. The, the bell? <laughs> by the bell. Uh, without chalk, because they don't allow it at my gym. Uh, and so I'm, I don't have one of those uh, grip trainee thingies yet, but I'm planning on getting one. It's on my wish list. Uh, and I would never have thought about that if it weren't for watching Juji Mufu. And the reason this is important is because of the next YouTuber that I fucking love, Meg Squats. She's so real, you guys. She's so fucking real. She had nervous breakdown. I get it. I've totally had a couple <laughs> nervous breakdowns in my time. It happens. It's not a bad thing. You just pick up the pieces afterwards and move on. And I like that she's so real and honest about it. Is that bag, is that bottle not like super ridiculously loud? Crackle, crackle, crackle. Sorry. Um, I noticed in my last couple videos I was really quiet. So I'm trying to project my voice a little more. Hopefully this take will not be like, ah, super loud. We'll see. Um, so Meg Squats. Uh, I had already back in October decided that I wanted to be able to do a pull up by the end of January. And I am so hopeful that I will get there. <laughs> but right now it's, it's looking a little scary guys. <laughs> so <coughs> Meg squats actually just put out a video recently. That's like, you know, if you're going to set goals for yourself, set goals about things that you're going to do instead of, um, like weight that you're going to lose. So, and I totally agree with that. Like I want to increase my, uh, bench press by, you know, 30% this year. I don't know if that's a feasible number. That's just a number I pulled out of my ass. I can currently bench 95 for one. It was my, as my max. So I would love to get it over a hundred. That would be amazing. But like, I can't do 95 for two yet. So, you know, I'm going to keep trying, but like, that's the sort of thing. Like, instead of saying, I want to lose 25 pounds this year, say, I want to gain, I want to gain the ability to do pull-ups. I want to gain the flexibility and the maneuverability and the physical ability to do pull-ups. That is something I want to gain this year. That is a goal that I have and I have been working towards. I'm very excited about it. And Meg Squats, I think, really gets that. Um, her videos are all very upbeat uh, for the most part, but she does also throw in some emotional ones and she throws in some, you know, vlog style things, but uh, mostly it's like, you know, episodic and it's really um, informative and interesting and I like it a lot. Uh, another one, if we're talking about informative and interesting, y'all, Phil DeFranco. Okay, I don't like traditional news sources. I read them and I just am like, uh, uh. just like that, right? My husband's on his way, by the way. Yay. Um, so it's Phil spit some of that jargon back out in a little bit of a more palatable way. I don't have to read it in the voice of somebody that I think is worshiping Donald Trump, but Oh, we're not supposed to get political on here. I'm sorry, guys. That is going to be the one thing that I don't know if I cannot do. Um, but I will try. I will try so hard. Okay. I'm sorry. I will try not to do that again. Um, but yeah, Phil DeFranco, he's informative. He's funny. He's got a whole bunch of different uh, irons in the fire as far as getting his... Uh, stuff through merchandise and another uh, sort of podcast thing that he does and some paid memberships for stuff that he um, does. And I don't think that we're involved in any of those right now. Uh, we sort of have pulled back on all of our Patreons and subscriptions and whatnot, uh, you know, beginning of the year, new year, new us, new financial structure and all that stuff. So um, I don't know if we'll go back to it or if we were ever part of it, but if that's something that you're interested in, you know, having a news source that isn't, uh, oh God, a shill, <laughs> um, 
I would say Phil DeFranco is your best bet there. Uh, another one that I really like that I actually found recently is Doll Lightful. And, oh, my cheeks hurt. Oh, is Doll Lightful. Doll Lightful, she like takes over old brats and, and monster high dolls and she paints them. And then she freaking like cuts them up and makes them into amazing art. Like mind blown how she does this with like just her brain. She's just like, oh, I'm going to need to hinge that knee a different way and then hinge that shin a different way and then hinge the ankle a different way. And I'm just like, Go look up Doll Lightful in the doobly-doo and click on it. And then go look up her video on um, Halloween turning one of her little dolls into a demon girl. Because she does, like, cloven hooves and everything out of, um, oh, I don't know what she uses. Epoxy? No. Ah, some kind of clay or something. A building substance. And it's really, really great. She does amazing work. And I super highly recommend you go like and subscribe. Um, then, of course, we have the Vlog Brothers, John and Hank. They are delightful. They are positive. Even when they're talking about a negative thing, they are always positive people to hear a negative thing from. Um, and so I really like their videos and of course they've got the don't forget to be awesome and they've got the nerd fighteria and just crash course is actually even on here is the next one that i really like a lot but like people like john and hank green um they do crash course and um oh i can't even think about it i'm so sorry john and hank i'm so sorry uh, but they do all these different channels and they do all these different learning things. And, you know, honestly, while Facebook, or while Facebook, bleh, while YouTube probably pays them a decent amount, you have to admit that they're not getting paid nearly what they're worth here. Okay. So, you know, throw them 10 bucks or something. I just think that'd be a good idea. Um, so the vlog brothers for sure. And then of course, crash course, which is one of uh, Hank and John's brain babies, and I love it. Then we have another new one that I found recently, Mariah Elizabeth, you guys. You guys, if you're into art, or if you're not into art, and you want to be into art, then just go look up Create This Book YouTube videos, and of course I'll link her YouTube down below, but go look up create this art YouTube videos and just enjoy. She is so freaking talented and it really inspires you to be that talented in return. It, it pushes you, you know, you, when you allow yourself to interact with people who push you, you push yourself further. Even if that interaction is just through a YouTube video, I saw that and then I challenged myself. I said, Hey, that is a gorgeous cupcake. I want to have the ability to draw a cupcake like that. I want to gain the ability to draw that cupcake. And so that's what I'm doing. People with this kind of talent, they push you and drive you. And so I highly recommend that you uh, go check them out. And then um, I think this one's number 11. Sorry, guys. I know this is getting a little long. Uh, I don't know how long, though. Uh... 23 minutes? Oh, that's not terrible. Um, <clears throat> number 11, in my personal opinion, Daniel and Bailey or Kill Rob Bailey, whatever channel, whichever channel you can get the videos on because they kind of go back and forth. Um, because they are so freaking wow they have started from nothing they now own their own gym they have their own apparel line not just one gym multiple gyms they have multiple gyms and and they have a private gym like at every gym that they own they have their own private gym i just like guys 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 goals <laughs> goals those are goals those are goals right there 
And Dana, oh my God, her shoulders are so shredded. It's gorgeous. She's going for the Arnold this year. I knew she was going to do it. She kept saying that she wasn't, but I knew it. I was like, mm -hmm. uh huh. So I'm really excited about that. And I definitely think that you guys should go check out her channel. And certainly uh, check out her Dana Lynn Bailey Daily or DLB Daily workout stuff that she does. Um, because it's only $7 a month and you get to train like Dana Lynn Bailey and she's a freaking badass. So why wouldn't you want to do that? Um, so segue, um, I have been getting so many questions recently about people who are just like, Oh my gosh, you've lost 95 pounds in five months. I need to know your secret. What did you do? How can I lose weight instantly? And this is where I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant, you guys. This is my question and answer. Um, so the question is, the the top one of the top questions I get asked is, I eat A amount of protein, B amount of fat, and C amount of carbs. Is that okay? Am I still going to lose weight? Like, I don't know you. I don't know your weight. I don't know your habits. Dude, all I can say is like in general, keep it under 20 carbs and you should be okay. But normally, like, all of this information is out there. All of the information that you're asking me is available, not just available, but I said it in the last video even, and I'm still getting the questions. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and address that. I'm not your weight loss coach. I am your cheerleader because I think you're awesome and you can definitely do it, but I'm not your weight loss coach. I am not your dietitian. I don't know anything about you. I don't know anything about your body and I cannot diagnose or um, offer you anything other than a shoulder to cry on and a kudos when you've done well. Um, another question I get a lot is like, oh, 95 pounds in five months, you found the secret. How do you get into ketosis really fast? And I just want to say that I didn't get into ketosis really fast. Here's the thing. When people are like, what's the, what's the best way to do it? The best way to do it is to do it. Not to fake it. Stick to 20 carbs or less a day. Be radically honest about everything you put in your mouth. If you're not radically honest about everything you put in your mouth and you're not writing it down and being, you know, I have, you know, I screenshot my food. I am accountable for it every day. If you're not accountable to something or someone and you don't have the drive to force yourself to be accountable, uh, to even just yourself, then you're not, you're already in the wrong mindset when you're asking me the fastest way to do it. Okay. The fastest way to do it is the right way. That is always the truth. The fastest way between one point and the next is a straight line, right? A straight line has been set out before you 20 carbs per day. Start out with higher calories, eat really high fat, low carb foods, eat a good amount of protein, drink your water. Just, this is normal stuff. You know how to feed yourself. You are, are going to be okay. It is always scary and new right at the beginning, but you're going to find very quickly that you're like, oh yeah, I've been reading labels for years. I know what to look for now. You know, I know that I don't want maltodextrin in my thing or Oh gosh, there's one more and I can't remember what it is uh, off the top of my head. Uh, laundry. Uh, if you hear the banging, uh, I don't know. Keto Connect does a bunch of videos on it. Um, or Maltitol. <coughs> <coughs> you know, just do it the right way. Do it the way that. you would if you weren't trying to cheat and get ahead, right? So just instead of looking at, at it as this is how I'm going to jumpstart my diet and get myself summer, you know, beach body ready in time for summer 2019, think 
oh, this is how I need to heal my body so that I can take my body to the beach and let it enjoy itself in summer of 2019 instead of being uncomfortable and uh, having inflammation issues and being more sensitive to the sun and whatever, you know, it, the fastest way into ketosis is to just do the lifestyle. So do it. I mean, if you want to get into ketosis, then do the lifestyle. Don't try to find a way to do it faster. Like MCT oil and all that stuff. I love MCT oil. I think MCT oil, like Zenwise does an MCT oil that has the right kind of, of, uh, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember even now. I have all these notes and none of them are in front of me. Um, I get mine on Amazon and I'll link it down below. And it's really good because it gives me a lot of energy. I don't know if it has helped with my weight loss, but it bypasses the liver and goes straight to giving my body the energy that it needs immediately. That's why I like it. It's like a shot of espresso, but better and longer lasting. Um, and so uh, would I say that it, it makes ketosis better? No, I don't think so. Um, I think the only thing that really makes getting into ketosis better is, you know, electrolytes and making sure you have enough salt and eating enough fat and not being afraid to go over a calorie limit that you arbitrarily set yourself because you don't know how the diet works. You know what I'm saying? Like, just keep it below 20 calories. And if you can't keep it below 20, then keep it below 30. Like 30 is really, I think like the, the cap, but you've got a little playroom there. If you have to keep it at 30, then keep it at 30. But realize that eventually you're going to have to keep it or take it right back down to 20 to continue your weight loss. And also remember that things like sweeteners, at Starbucks, even the sugar-free sweeteners, like their sugar-free simple syrup is maltitol, which is like, will spike your insulin twice as hard as sugar will and has the same carbs or more carbs. I don't remember. But like, you got to be careful about stuff like that when you're talking about giving yourself leeway because leeway means you want treats and treats are not necessary right now. Right now, your whole life should be nothing but treats, to be perfectly honest. They're just not going to be the sugary kind. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is a question <laughs> that I was not asked. This is a question that one of those people who do keto went on Dr. Oz, and Dr. Oz, or one of the people on the show with him or the view or something, whatever, one of those morning shows. I don't remember which one. Uh, they said, the question was, what would you tell all those other people at home to motivate them towards your level of weight loss and getting off the couch? Are you happy? Okay. I don't know what your answer was, but whatever your answer was, that's personal. I do not give a shit how big you are. I do not give a shit how skinny you are. I don't care. Are you happy? That's all that matters. Do not use me as some kind of motivation. You will not succeed that way. Use you as motivation if you ever decide to. See, people think that I decided to lose weight because I didn't find myself attractive, but that is not true. I do find myself attractive. I decided to lose weight because I don't like being in pain and I was hurting all the time. It's like not liking having hair on the back of my neck. So I just shaved it all off and now it's growing out and I'm looking like a crazy person. Like these are decisions that I make about my life because of how I feel and how I want to feel. It's not because of how I look or I want to look. If it was about how I look or I want to look, I don't think I would be rocking a mohawk that isn't spiked up correctly in a YouTube video while wearing pajamas. Like I just, it was never about how I looked. It, I thought I looked hot. 
I have dangerous curves is what some people would say. Let's be honest, my husband. Um, it wasn't ever about anything other than feeling better because I hurt so much. I, I could not exist without being in pain. So what I would tell you is to do what makes you happy. And if what makes you happy is to eat a donut, then eat that fucking donut and love it. Yes, queen, love it. Love yourself and love that fucking donut and enjoy it because it's just fuel. It doesn't matter. Like I'm on a fat fuel diet because that was what works better for my brain and my body. And I'm comfortable with that. I don't crave sugar. But if you love sugar and you don't want to give it up, because honestly, what I could go for right now is a Boston cream filled eclair. Like you have no idea. Oh my God. Um, eat a donut for me. If you're a, if you're a person who can have carbs, I don't think that that I can ever stand behind one diet a hundred percent because that's not fair. Like Jordo shrinks who I should have shouted out because she's amazing. She's lost 130 freaking pounds in a year. Like what? Um, so I should have shouted her out in my little shout out section. Like she eats carbs all the time. She gets like oatmeal and berries and apples and bananas and like carbs, carbs, carbs. She eats bread you know, she's a vegan, so she eats a lot of, or vegetarian, I don't remember, sorry, Jordo. Um, so she just eats a lot of carbs in general, but she still managed to lose 130 pounds. There is no one diet out there that's going to be a miracle drug for everybody, right? And so when you say, how do I get into ketosis fastest, what you're saying is, I am ready to start the next slingshot diet. That's not a healthy way to go about it. Um, Anyway, we have ranted and rumbled and that for 36 minutes. I am so sorry. I will not add anything to the end of this um, except for the cat things that I said before. But um, thank you all for coming along and uh, enduring that with me. I know I can be a little annoying sometimes with my rantiness, but uh, but this is my platform and I'll rant if I want to. <laughs> Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Don't forget to look at all the links down in the doobly-doo, uh, including the links to my Instagram and um, blog, Sarah and Kit Get Fit, where one of my really good friends and I are both blogging our experience with losing weight and how difficult it is as an older woman to, to do that. So anyway, thank you all again so much, and I hope you have a glorious week. And I will see you later. Also, moms who are at home, have a great night. I know your kids are coming home soon, but they'll be gone again in the morning. Bye. I put a scarf on Tiger Lily because she's always cold. And this is her taking it off because she hates it. And me. And everything that I stand for as a person. And here's Zuki just loving everything I've ever given him in his whole life. Because he's a dog, not a cat. Oh, you good boy. Oh, you got your oh, I wish I could play with you today, but it was arm day. Chest day with a little bit of delts. <laughs>